towards it. <laughs> Bad things are going to happen sometimes. But when they happen, how do we process it? Do we make sure that it doesn't spill over to somebody else? Because we got to keep our heart with all diligence. Amen. Keep your heart. He said, because out of it flows the issues of life. And how many can look at yourself and say, I got some issues? Every hand in this place should go up. Amen. Out of it flows the issues of life. He said, keep your heart with all diligence. How do I keep my heart, Pastor? Maybe you keep a check on your heart. You keep a check on what you're allowing in, what you're allowing out. Yeah. Yeah. You keep a check on what you're processing. Yeah. What's being dealt with? Because there's some things that really have to be dealt with. There's some stuff you can't just leave laying. Talk about it. Amen? Amen. So anger issues, we can't leave those things laying dormant. Yeah. Oh, it ain't bothering nobody, Brother Tim. <laughs> it's just my anger, that's all. But it, it, as long as nobody stir it up, I won't punch no holes in no walls, <laughs> and I won't kick no doors down. As long as you don't mess with me, the anger's going to sit there and... Oh, that's good. I pull it out just in case I need to. In case you put, in case you pluck my nerves. No, that's an issue that needs to be dealt with. That's something that needs to be dissected and sit there and say, okay, what am I angry about? How can I get rid of this? Now, don't get me wrong. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. But there is an anger. That causes sin. Yeah. It's rage. Mm -hmm. I do rage. Did you punch a hole in the wall when a person told you not to do something? It's rage. It's rage. Huh? I just got it. It's rage. And sometimes rage sit there quietly. As long as nobody don't, don't, don't stir it up. Don't mess, my, don't mess with my rage. I won't mess with yours. Amen. We good. I'm the nicest person. So you don't do what I say do. Now we got a problem. But it needs to be dealt with. Amen. It needs to be dissected. And you need to pull it apart and say, okay, why am I angry? What's going on here? How can I get rid of this thing so that it's not sitting there like a powder keg to blow up at any minute? Amen. He said, guard your heart with all Diligence, for out of it is flowing the issues of life. Hallelujah. I have to keep a check on my heart. i got to keep a check on what's coming in, what's going out, how am I processing things. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, see, in the heart, when something gets in the heart, it's there. It's there. Amen. You know, when you get, get something in your heart, when, when your heart is made up and your, your mind is made up, and it's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. They could, a hundred people could tell you no. If it's in your heart, you're still going to do it. Mm. Amen? See how powerful the heart is? See why he says to, to guard our heart and keep our heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life? Because he knows that what's in us is in us. Amen? Hallelujah. He says to guard it. We've got to guard it. Does that mean that I block people out and lock and shut stuff down? And <laughs> ain't nobody getting in? And ain't nobody getting out. No. That's not what he's talking about. But what he is saying is that you have to be wise with what you allow into your heart. You have to be wise with what you allow to come in. The, the people that come into your life. You have to be wise with all those things. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now I'm not shutting this down and locking this up and pull, pulling this down and... Shh. Amen? Anybody ever been like that before? Like I'm locking everything up. I don't want to know you. And I don't want you to know me. So we, I'm going to give you the automated response. My automated system will talk to you. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine, praise the Lord. 
Did you have a bad week? Oh, no, nothing bothers me. I'm blessed of the Lord. People try to get close to you, try to get to know you, and it's always the automated response because the heart is locked up and it says, I'm not letting anybody in because I'm afraid you're going to hurt me. And what if God sends somebody in your life that is going to be an impact to your life and the heart is all locked up? And then they got to chisel away at stuff. They got to hit stuff, stick dynamite under there to try to get it open. All this, and it's all locked up. And they can't get in until you let them in. God himself will not go in until you let him in. Amen? So what happens is, because when we, when we lock our hearts up like this, it means that I'm not letting anybody in because I don't want to be hurt. Because I don't trust folk. Amen? Amen. Why? Because of how, because of, of the way that I grew up or my experience that I had, I don't trust. You got some brothers that say, I don't trust no females. I'm sorry, no. What if you get married? I still ain't going to trust her. Locked up. Married and everything. Still locked up. And then she's asking you, why does it seem like, I feel like I still don't know you. How come it seems like you're just holding up walls against me? You won't let me in nowhere. I'm good, baby. This is the way I am. <laughs> you marry me knowing that, okay, this is how it is. This is how we roll it. So let's keep it moving. <laughs> because it's all locked up. Because you're afraid that if I open it up, she's going to do something that's going to make me mad or hurt me. Right. And all the sisters said, Amen. <laughs> sisters don't have no stuff locked up, do they? Yes. Yeah, they do. Sure do. Uh huh. Yes. They lock stuff up too. Uh huh. They lock it up too. So, answer, I want to hear it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's get them back. <laughs> Amen. But the, the interesting thing is, see, women lock things up differently than men. Men lock stuff up, and they know, and, and, and the women know that it's locked up. Yeah. Women will lock stuff up, and you will think she is so in love with you. And you won't know she got a lock on. Amen. 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 <laughs> now I'm not saying that. Lord Jesus, let me put this this thing right here. Because a couple of women might be getting canceled right now. I'm not saying that. To say that you don't trust the person. Everybody's not dealing with that issue though. Okay? Let's make that clear. But we're talking about deliverance from locking up our hearts. Amen? Because when we lock up our hearts, we run the risk of missing out on some really great things. Amen? When we lock up our hearts, we really miss out on feeling, number one, the love of God. Number two, for those that will be married, don't lock your hearts up. Because if you lock your heart up, you're going to miss out on, 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 on love. Understand that somebody can actually care for you that much. Amen? Hallelujah. I'm going to let that simmer a little bit. That's, that seemed like his work in the room a bit there. <laughs> because let me tell you something. When you stand up before God and you're getting ready to make a vow one to another, then that means that you're saying, I'm, I'm getting ready to open up everything to you. Look, I'm like that. That's a serious pastor. I don't know how to do that. Amen. 
That says that I'm making a covenant with you that says that we're now going to become one. Amen? We got a carpet in here, but you can still hear a pin drop, I bet you. But the interesting thing is, he says here, to guard your heart with all diligence. And he doesn't mean lock it up. He means that we're careful about what we let into our heart that will affect us in a negative way. Amen. 